Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Nick Terry and today I have an exciting new video for you guys. Last month, we spent over a million dollars on Facebook ads and I want to share with you guys kind of like our secrets and kind of like the key things we did last month uh, to be able to spend a million dollars on Facebook ads, but also to generate over $3.5 million back in revenue for our clients. So with that being said, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button for new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and let's get started guys. So. $1 million in 30 days on Facebook ads. Yeah, and actually it was like 95% on Facebook ads. So I just wanna add that clarity right there. We spent just right there at that million, but it was like 95% of that spend. And I'll show you guys in a second what that spend breakdown looks like. So we spent about $521,000 on Facebook ads for our e-commerce brands. I uh, did about $1.4 million back right there. And then our app and sales brand, um, did you know, we spent $107,000 that month or, or May. This is all going in May as well. These are all of our like our P&Ls essentially uh, for those particular brands right there. Uh, May we spent $107,000 and you know, it's like a two X right there. So that's about $200,000 in revenue. And then uh, our Legion brand we did about $389,000 in spend. And that's purely 100% Facebook right there. And we spent did about a 5x return on that right there so it's gonna be roughly about just under two million dollars in revenue so you can kind of see like some of these brands like take up a lot of the revenue just from like one or two accounts in this perspective right here so just show you guys our client split right there as across 10 different brands eight e-commerce an app and a legion brand right there to give us a total of a million dollars in spend with $3.5 million in revenue. So, and again, just a quick disclaimer, out of that $1 million plus we spent, uh, 50 to $60,000 was spent on Google plus radio advertising. So, and yes, we have a client spending like literally 30 grand a month on radio advertising. So now I wanted to show you guys this perspective right here. So the whole goal here is to show you guys, uh, show you guys our mile high view of our process of how we work together with clients and everything like that and how we can able to effectively spend this uh, from a systemist, systematic perspective and that sense right there. So first off is this is the old way. This is like how probably every agency or not every agency, but every person running ads themselves basically do it in that perspective. They create new ads every couple of weeks. They find a winner. They scale it up for a few weeks. Ads start to fatigue, profits start to shrink, and then they have to sit down and realize, oh, I need to go create new ads again. Our way is that we create new ads on a weekly basis. We find a winner, we scale, then we create new ads on a weekly basis to find a winner and scale. So we're constantly finding new winners and scaling because we're creating new ads weekly. So we have to put a lot of emphasis right here on this creating new ads weekly basis. So first off, let me just show you guys the account structure we utilized. And I'm actually gonna show it to you from our Legion, one of our Legion clients right here, or our Legion client in that perspective. So we use three campaigns, okay? Uh, we have ads holding container, which is basically just our like, you know, dummy campaign and we house all of the ads so we can get approved for our client. This campaign never spends a dime in its whole life, okay? It just stays off, we just create ads there and we send them off for approval and that's it. Then our creative testing campaign is where we test all of our ads. This is testing more than creative. This is messaging, this is creative. This is um, hooks, like every single thing that gets a component of an ad is where we do in our creative testing campaign. And then our top of funnel campaign, it's it's called just rural because this, I, I, this particular campaign is going after people in a rural area. So that's why it's called top of funnel rural. In that sense right there. But this is just your standard top of funnel campaign. And I'm gonna break down these in a second. So again, ads hold a container each month. We have an ad set in there and basically we just create all of our ads in each you know, dictated by each month. And then our creative testing campaign, we basically go ahead and we create a new batch for every um, new set of ads. And we organize each batch by a particular concept. So let's say for example, if we wanna test a UGC unboxing video, we're gonna go out there, find a UGC creator, create three videos of, or four or five UGC creators to create each a video unboxing a product. And that'll be one batch. Batch 102, and it'll be five UGC creators you know, each with an unboxing video around one of our products. Then batch 101 might be five different pieces of copy tested against a winning ad. So we'll have our winning ad, we'll test five different ad copy variations against it. Batch 104 might be five different headlines. So we'll have five different ads in there and each one will be a different headline with the same winning creative, the same winning copy. So each batch is either gonna be new creative, new copy, new headline, or we're testing whole new concepts where it's gonna be fresh copy, fresh creative, and fresh headline. So it just kind of depends on that. So there's four different possibilities of what could be in there, okay? And then obviously you see right here, it's just a screenshot um, below of what one of those, um, like inside of one of those batches look like. Obviously I just took a screenshot, hit this up because I can't let you guys see these ads. 
um, due to client responsibility, you know, client stuff like that. And as you can see right here, it tested, you know, three new ads and um, in our KPI, we're going for us $35. We seen a $49. Now here is a big thing right here. People will go ahead, they'll go and they'll follow this strategy. They'll create a campaign. They will create some of these ad sets. They'll test new ads and find new winning ads. And they're like, well, Nick, your, your strategy didn't work. <laughs> well, no shit, it didn't work <laughs> because your ads you created didn't work. So you have to look at it from this perspective. If you look at it from the perspective of, hey, I'm gonna create this campaign, I'm gonna create these ad sets, and I'm gonna get a winning ad, and you know we're gonna scale and everything's gonna be bliss, and you think that the action you're taking is creating that ad set and creating that campaign, the way you're splitting it up is the reason why you're successful, that is false. The reason why this is successful is because we consistently do this. I mean, look, we're at 104, batch 104, okay? It's 104 batches of ads we've tested and guess what? We probably found 10, 15 winners. That's it. You gotta test a lot of ads and you really need to focus down on creating really good ads to find winners. So the action is creating the ad, Look, de digging deep into the messaging and the, the persona and the desires of that persona. Like that's where the money is made. The actual action of you putting some ads testing is simply to get data back on whether or not your thesis and your hypothesis was correct or not, okay? And that's where we put a lot of pressure at. So we might have, this can't, this campaign as a whole might do fucking dog shit when it comes down to results in terms of overall row ads and cost per lead, because that's not the objective here. The objective here is to test a lot of these batches, find winning ads so we can move to our scaling campaign. Exactly like right here, find winners, move to scale. So again, if you're focused on overall KPI, that's not the right way to look at it. If you're focused on ad set KPI, it's not the way to look at it. You want to find individual winners at this level. And if you're not getting individual winners, if you're not finding winning ads, it's not your audience. It's not, you know, like anything else. It's literally your ability to create an ad, create the right messaging that resonates with your audience. And that's where you get a double down on to either work with a partner that can help you better your messaging, better your creative, or you dig deep into marketing fundamentals and everything like that and learn how to build very profitable ads. So you have two possibilities right there that you have to work on and that's it right there. Now, a few like rules essentially of how we manage that ad, that campaign specifically, the creative testing campaign, is that if an ad has spent lifetime greater than the AOV, so let's say the AOV is 100 bucks and we spent over 100 bucks, then we're gonna look at it, we're gonna start looking at that ad, okay? Um, is ROAS better than the KPI we were looking for? So if we're looking for a 3X, is ROAS, ROAS above a 3X? Cool, it is. Let's move to scaling campaign, okay? And we're also gonna leave that ad on, side, ad on inside the creative testing campaign. Now, is ROAS less than the KPI? So let's say, for example, we're doing 2.5X ROAS. It's less than the KPI. We're gonna turn it off once it spends over 100 bucks. Okay. Now, if our lifetime spent is less than our AV, our, our you know our AOV is 100 bucks and we only spent 60 bucks, then do nothing, okay? Because we're just letting, we're still letting that spin a little bit, and everything like that. And you don't have to set. We set $100 a day budgets for this particular account, but you can start off with 10 to $15 a day budgets for this ABO campaign right here. So again, this is a ABO campaign. So ad set budget optimization. Okay, that's because we want to force spin to these specific creatives as we, every batch we create. Essentially. Okay. Now. As you turn off ads inside an ad set in the creative testing campaign, others will get spin. So for all those people who are like, well, Nick, well, what happens when one ad gets all the spin and others don't? Well, if that ad's getting all the spin and it's profitable, that's okay, okay? If that ad's getting all the spin and it's not profitable, as soon as it reaches $100 in spin, if your AOV is 100 bucks, then turn it off and others will start getting the spin. Very simple. Now, let's see. So just from a higher level perspective too, is, okay, cool. How do you actually like manage this campaign? Um, or not manage the campaign, but how do you actually work it? So every single week, we're testing three to six new ads around one new ad concept per week. So we find an ad concept and we test three to six very ads around that concept. Basically, let's say for example, if it's a split screen, you know, us versus them ad, we're gonna create three to six split screen us versus them ads and test our very best, you know, like take on that particular ad and that's it right there, okay? And again, just to go further down to it, an ad concept can be an iteration of an existing ad, emulation of a competitor's ad, which basically just means like a replication, like, hey, like go see a competitor's ad, create your own version of it, okay? Ideation is literally where you go and build it from scratch, okay? You know, it's a pure thing that you ideated, you came up with, you go out there and you build that ad from scratch and that's right there. Whole new angle, whole new persona. 
might be a product launch you're launching. You create a bunch of new ads around for a new product launch. And so every one of these batches that we're creating are around one of these six things right there. So very simple. Okay. Now, oh, and also too, just to clarify here, we're using the same creative testing campaign for all campaigns. So if you have like one campaign that's top of funnel for your men, your pants, if you sell it like your clothing store and you have your pants broken up for men in one campaign and your your shirts broken for for women in another campaign i'll still do one creative testing campaign and i'll just adjust the audience if i need to for male or female in that perspective right there uh, and we're also too we're using broad for everything that's also another thing you're gonna notice we're we haven't used an interest or a look like in the last 60 days and we're seeing three to four x better results for our clients okay and there's a lot that goes into that. I've already have a video on broad targeting, why it works. And uh, yeah, and basically it allows us to compartmentalize of, hey, this like, like for example, right here, you know, this batch 104 right here, it's getting a $53 cost per lead. The KPI for this account is $35, okay? If I would create this ad set right here and launch some new ads and then it doesn't work, then guess what? It's not the audience because we're using broad only. So now I'm forced to go out there and build better ads, okay? Whereas, if you're running this and you're still testing interest, it looks like she might be like, well, Nick, what, 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 what about the interest? Maybe you need to throw an interest on there. Maybe you go throw a look like on there. That's outdated methodology of running an ad account. Okay. And look, if that still works for you, go for it. Like I'm just simply showing you what has tremendously helped my business from an agency, helped my clients and made my clients a lot of money. Okay. So I'm just simply sharing what worked for you and how these constraints of forcing me to go build better creatives has worked 10 times better than, oh, well, maybe if I can just go try to find a better audience to run my crappy ad against. <laughs> so that's just something else too you need to compartmentalize when looking at this. Okay. Now let's go further down. So this is the most important thing in the whole entire thing I'm showing you here. This is where the money is being made. Okay, these next things is not where the money's made. It's simply just how to amplify a winning concept once you built a winning concept. Okay, so scaling. Okay, broad again, I'm using the same audience as my creative testing campaign because then if I test against a bad, you know, a different audience, my creative and scale in a different audience, then it's um, two different variables right there. Okay, so just put in that perspective. So we basically dump in, we have one ad set. That's it, just one ad set. Okay, top funnel one ad set broad. Okay. And we simply just toss in all of our winning ads from creative testing. That's it. We're going to have like, we have 33 different ads in this one ad set right here. Okay. This right here, this is the ads and everything. We have 33 different ads in here. Not all of them on only like five or 10 are on. Okay. And the reason why five or 10 are on and not, um, not five or 10, five or six are on is because we have specific rules, which I'm gonna get to in a second. I'm gonna just go do them now, uh, for, killing an ad okay so you're gonna toss you're gonna find a winning ad at creative testing you're tossing your scaling 50 percent of them just actually don't work i'm just gonna tell you that now you know like they work at 100 bucks a day but they don't work at the few thousand dollars a day you need them to so you just okay cool we'll turn them off after a few days based off these kpis and then there will be a few that are going to perform amazing let's be about 50 percent but those 50 percent that perform amazing they will die out over time and it's up to you to be able to have new ads to be able to put in there okay so that's how like it never dies out. That's how you keep building up more and more ads. So this is the rules that we follow. Basically last seven days, if an ad is 15 to 25% under or over your goal KPI, and it's meant more than one extra AOV, turn off. So here's two examples right here. Let's say for example, you're, you're optimizing for leads. And let's say for example, your goal is $35 a lead. Again, just depends on the niche, okay? Last seven days equals 40 bucks turn off. It basically means over the last seven days, this particular ad, we had a goal of 35, we're getting $40. We're going to turn it off because it's 15% over our KPI goal. Now, our KPI goal for ROAS, obviously over is better. So we actually want under. So just make sure we compartmentalize that right get there. Okay. So our ROAS goal over the last seven days, the 3X, and we're getting a 2.55. That's when we want to turn it off. It's 15% below. Okay. Now, again, 15 to 25%. Let's say, for example, your break even ROAS is 2X. You might allow a higher margin just to have more winning ads, have a little bit more volume, just if you're okay with going through an un unprofitable time. So again, 
Um, if you have no ads to replace, uh, it's, a, it's like another problem here. If you're going through this strategy right here and you run out of ads and all of a sudden you have no more ads in your scaling campaign, all of a sudden you, you know, you might drop from a few thousand dollars a day and sell down a few hundred because you just turn off a big campaign because you had no winning ads. You have to determine that perspective right there. Hey, do we want to sacrifice volume of number of sales per day? And while we go find new winning ads in our creative testing campaign, or do we accept a period of low profits you, you I definitely don't recommend being unprofitable, lower profits for a few days until you find new winning ads. So that's a decision you have to make. I have some clients that are okay with going unprofitable for a few days or low, little to no profits for a few days. And I have some that, hey, they refuse to drop profit. So we, it just depends on the client. And then also too, it just depends on you as a business owner because it's mostly businesses watching this particular videos and stuff. Now, my scaling rules. So now we know how we kill ads in here, but how do we increase budget here? Cause this is the only thing I'm increasing budget on the whole account. That's it. How do we increase that? Okay. And that's basically, here is our rules right here for scaling. Okay. Um, so budget increase, we're looking at yesterday's data. Cool. Are we hitting our KPI goal? Let's say for, we want a three X. I'm looking at three X. Okay, cool. We hit, we hit a three X. All right. Today, um, I usually do this about morning time, nine to 10 AM. So it's me just after that morning rush. Uh, morning rush, it, it just kind of depends on where you're at, but it's typically gonna be between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. And I'm gonna basically look at it. Are we at our goal KPI today? So like, let's say for example, yesterday we did 3X overall. Awesome. Today, are we at 3X or very close to 3X? Yes, we are still. Okay, cool. Let's increase today's budget by 20%. Now let's say for example, if yesterday we did, you know, 20% or like a 2X for us and our goal is a three. And then today we're still at a 2X then we're gonna decrease budget by 20%, okay? So you can see right here, my budget decrease rule because you wanna, you wanna fluctuate up or down. Now, if let's say for example, we want to, or like let's just say for example, we're getting mixed signals here, then we're gonna do nothing, okay? So let's say for example, yesterday, our goal KPI was an X or, an, or a check mark. So let's say for example, we didn't hit our goal KPI yesterday, but today we're at, you know, we're at a goal KPI. We didn't hit it yesterday, but today we are, we're gonna do nothing, we're just gonna leave it. Because if we pull back spend today on a day that's doing profit, why do we want to pull it back? So we're going to look at it from that perspective. So if we're getting mixed signals, we do nothing. If we do clear signals, we do something. And that's either going to be increased budget or decreased budget. It just depends on your perspective or your scenario. So that's our scaling rules. That's our keel rules, essentially. And also to just to add another note here, this right here is based off of inside of your ad account data. So like we'll see our inside of our ad account, we're gonna have a lower ROAS inside of our ad account due to iOS 14.5. And then we have for MER, which is overall metrics, not perspective. And just to look at overall MER as well, this is another thing that we do every day, every single day is we track daily Shopify sales, Facebook spend, Snapchat spend, Google spend, like any, any, any channels we're spending on. We, like I said, we literally have a client spending on Sirius XM radio advertising. So we're tracking that on a daily basis on the spend side. Then we're going to see how, then you can literally just do a simple, um, like equal sum formula in Google, just summing up these, uh, spend to get your total spend. And this is just going to equal your Shopify. And then you get your overall robust. And that's what we're focusing on overall robust when we're looking at this right here. So that's also another big thing to look at is that we're looking for, we're looking at this in that sense right there. So you gotta make sure you're tracking MER daily and that's gonna give us our day to day of like how things are looking, okay? Uh, we're basically updating this every morning for the previous day. At the same time, we're doing this as well, okay? Now, lastly is we're consistently reviewing progress of our monthly goals. So our monthly goals are our North Star. That's what we're trying to hit. I'm not looking at trying to spend a million dollars this year. I'm looking at what do we have to spend this month and focus on this month to hit our overall goal of a million dollars in spend this year. So you can see right here, this is basically just a yearly kind of like my goal sheet right here. This particular client we actually took on back in um, October of uh, 2021. Yeah, but we just started implementing a sheet about two months ago and it's been a game changer for all of our clients because we put a lot of more pressure now on actively going out there and hitting those monthly goals, which judges our performance for clients. That's it right there. We're judged on our month to month. So we wanna make sure we're hitting them. And to be able to hit a goal, you have to be clear on the goal. So we're very clear on the revenue we wanna hit, the spin we wanna hit, um, and the ROAS. So you can see right here, below is the goal in the yellow. So how much do we wanna hit this month? How much do we wanna spend at what ROAS? And that's basically, you know, we can consistently check every day. Uh, today's June 8th, uh, the day that I'm filming this. And you can see right here, we're only eight days into the month. So we still have a lot more room to go for our June goal. So tracking this on a daily basis allows us to kind of look at the whole picture right there 
and looking at this. And again, we, we like to look at this on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, just because like every day it won't change that much, but at least a few days a week, you want to be looking at that. Monday will allow you to kind of look at a fresh picture. Wednesday might just be kind of a check-in and then Friday might just be like, hey, cool. Like what's up before the week? So <laughs> yeah. And then lastly, we're using Triple L as well to be able to track everything. Uh, from an attribution perspective. So make sure you're using triple L plus attribution because that's gonna allow you to have more clarity on different things like this, like especially in your creative testing side, uh, we're seeing a lot of different uh, metrics on our creative testing side. So like triple L might show like, again, triple L might show a five extra RAS and Facebook might show up one, Facebook might show a five and triple L might show a five or a one. So we just basically use triple L as our single source of truth to make all of our decisions inside the ad account. And that's, and that's it right there. So yeah, guys, that's basically how we spent, whew, like I said, uh, $1 million in 30 days on Facebook. And really hope this video helped you guys uh, kind of break down like our process and everything, how we look at everything and how we consistently get results for our clients. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I really appreciate the support on the channel. If you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button for new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And if you like this video, hit the like button and drop a comment below with your favorite part of the video. And if you are a business owner doing at least $50,000 per month in revenue. Make sure you click the link below to book a call with me, my team. Uh, we work with all kinds of businesses between Legion, app installs, uh, to e-commerce, which is more of our specialty in the e-com side. Click the link below, book a call with me, my team. We'll hop on a call together. We'll do a strategy session together. And basically from there, uh, you can take that strategy and run with it, or you have the option to work with us if you choose. So make sure you click the link below to book that call. Uh, with my team completely for free no obligations or anything like that now if you're doing less than fifty thousand dollars per month and you're looking to expand and grow your business keep watching the channel as these videos are designed to make you more money level up you level you up as a marketer when it comes out to the facebook ad side the marketing side um, and learning those marketing fundamentals to help you grow your business and everything like that uh, there will be a course soon it's actually going to go through all of this and break it down to more of a bite-sized piece where it's step-by-step -step that you can leverage inside of your business. Uh, but it won't be too further down the line, uh, but we'll keep you guys updated around that. Thank you guys again for watching today's video. Again, my name is Nick Terrio. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace out. Talk to you guys next time.